Good morning, or good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to the Highlands of Scotland. It's actually technically the Lowlands here. We are at Loch Lomond, and we are about to climb Ben Lomond for my birthday. Today is the 5th of September, and I thought that this would be a perfect thing to do with the top 10 autumn list, although it feels like summer. It's actually 26 degrees here uh, at Loch Lomond on September the 5th, unusually warm. Uh, and uh, I've got a lot of darker fragrances for the autumn fall period. This is going to be a really relaxing video, hopefully. That's what I aim it to do. Uh, I want you to come on a little adventure. I love climbing uh, mountains. It's kind of like a new passion that I've found in the past two or three years. This is my second ever Munro mountain. And a Munro Scottish mountain is a mountain that is typically above 3,000 feet or 900 meters. And so it's going to take probably, well, it would usually take about two hours to climb, but with all the fragrances in my bag and the fact that we're going to be stopping and filming at least 10 times, who knows how long it will take. But this is a video I'd recommend that you watch before bed. This is a... <sighs> going to be a relaxing video. At least for you it is. I'm going to be climbing this for like four or five hours, so I don't know how, it'll, how relaxing it'll be. But um, these fragrances, most of them are actually new. They're fragrances I've never talked about. Um, I hope that you get a lot of value from them. Um, and I think that I've got a really good balance of designer and niche. There are some fragrances, of course, that you've seen me talk about all the time, but that means that I've grown to love them more, you know? Um, but actually there is, there's a surprising amount of new fragrances, fragrances that are debuting on this channel. Um, in fact, I think there's actually even one that isn't really talked about in Fragcom at all. Anyway, we've got a lot to do, so you're going to see some incredible sights, it's going to be amazing, going to be fantastic. Let's get to it. So we've come actually to the starting point, even though we've been walking now for about 40 minutes. Technically, if you start from the car park, you're actually nearly a quarter of the way there, but this is the official starting point of Ben Lomond. So why not start with number 10? This is Oud Touch by Frank Oliver. Sorry, there are a lot of flies and I'm wearing a lot of suntan lotion. Um, this is basically a clone of Oud Isfahan by Christian Dior, which I'm a very, very big fan of. Um, I've always wanted that fragrance, but I've never felt as though I could justify the price and the price goes up almost every year. So I'm not usually the biggest fan of clones, as hopefully you know, but I thought, you know what, I'll, I've always wanted Oud Isfahan, I'll, I'll gamble on this. And um, it got really good reviews and it's got a really lot of points on there for Grantica, so I just thought, why not? And this is very, very similar to Oud Isfahan, at least in the uh, in the first few hours. And the opening is fantastic. In fact, it's, it seems to have um, like the Oud Isfahan DNA, but also um, a lot of toffee as well, uh, to my nose. But it is very, very similar. Um, but there is like a to toffee caramel thing going on as well. Um, but as it does dry down, it sort of loses its quality and it does become a little bit more synthetic and you can tell that it's, you know, it's a clone and it's made uh, with cheaper materials. But it is worth it for the opening and it, and, and it lasts for a long time. That the, the opening quality that is very similar uh, to this fan is, is pretty good for four hours. I didn't buy it because of any, like because it's Frank Oliver or because of any particular brand, I just bought it because I've always wanted Oud Isfahan in my collection. So Oud Isfahan is a very, very straightforward Oud and Rose. I'd actually recommend it to people who don't even like initially like Ouds. So yeah, there's, there's a lot of good stuff about it. But um, that is my number 10. Um, and there we go. And keeping on with the Oud trend, I've got number nine, Oud Rain. Now, the reason why this is so low is because this is my secret weapon for days like this. Like I said, this is September 5th. You're watching this on the 30th of September, and, you know, it shouldn't be this warm, really. I mean, it's it's um, about, oh, even a week ago, I was outside my flat, and I was like, 
oh man, it's really cold, it's becoming winter, what can you do? And I was fully committed to the fact that it was just going to get colder and colder. And I thought, oh my goodness, I'm climbing Ben Lomond on the 5th, I hope that everything's going to be okay. This is, this is one of the best days we've actually had this year in Edinburgh. This is actually better than 99% of the days that we've had throughout the spring and summer. So, you know, and, and apparently the trend is going to be keeping on. And so I want something that is still autumnal as leaves are falling, um, but I want it to be hot. So when I'm not wearing my stereotypical summer fragrances, I'll be wearing Oud Rain. So, great, great Oud fragrance, but with this um, really genuine juicy mango, as, as if you're biting into a mango. It's it's a very complicated fragrance, um, a lot of depth to it, a lot of a lot of complicated things going on, and not your typical Oud. And for those of you who are Oud fans, but you want something a little bit more tropical, then this is it. Really good projection longevity as well. Really, really decent projection longevity actually lasts throughout the. Um, day i probably should have worn this as my signature scent today um but i'm actually wearing another fragrance on the list that is lighter um but yeah a fantastic fragrance by rainier and i think probably the most underrated from his line or at least one of the most underrated from his line i've been talking about it for years i recommend it a lot We are about halfway now up uh, the mountain. Um, we are actually two thirds of the way up uh, elevation wise, so it will start to even out and get a lot better. But the views here are why I'm up here. You know, I'm not really an athlete. I'm not a fitness person, um, was rubbish at sports day in school. But um, I, this funny little story here, but I, a few years ago, I, I wrote a script for a TV series called The Secret of Svalbard. And um, I wrote like five episodes of that. It's my favorite uh, piece of narrative fiction I've ever written. And the main character, who I always envisioned Chris <laughs> to play as the main part, was, um, was a guy called John April. And he was a mountaineer and I really researched. I, I loved all the characters that I wrote in that. And uh, I knew all the characters very, very well. And anyway, I decided that he was a mountaineer and I started watching documentaries about mountains and started reading up on it and just the views that um, you know you see and the, the high that people described of um, you know climbing and the effort and it's really really tough and rubbish and then you get to the top and suddenly it's like a euphoric um, thing it really appealed to me and really attracted me uh, and it is really tough it's been a very very tough walk and also stopping to do this makes it even tougher but we're blessed with a really really beautiful day here the views are incredible um they might even be uh, the first munro that i ever went uh, up which was a munro called chahalian so a lot of great stuff anyway number eight on my list is this this is lamal elixir this is where this list starts to get really really tough because all the fragrances here i'm really really proud of i've got some incredible um fragrances to be honest in this list probably my favorite list uh ever and i don't say that lightly i've had some great awesome and full lists Anyway, uh, this is already a bit scratched and battered from, you know, how it carrying it. Maybe I should have just kept the fragrances at home. But an incredible, an incredible fragrance uh, by Jean-Paul Gaultier. Probably the best Lamal that's ever come out since the original. Um, I do like Lamal Le Parfum, but this just takes the cake. This is absolutely phenomenal. And it is like, it's got the raw DNA of the original uh, Lamal, but it, it really is like updated with uh, lots of other fragrances. So it's a bit low on the list because... Um, the only thing is is that this is more of a winter fragrance really um but in really cold autumn normal days this this is going to work my number seven is this this is uh zaharoff's signature and this is my scent of the day instantly it would be Guerlain's Linston um Linston de Guerlain Extreme Lidge but unfortunately let me just make doubly careful here that this is still recording here 
but unfortunately uh, my lidge bottle is uh, at my mum and dad's but in a way I'm glad that it's there because it really is like I'm running out of that really running out of that so today I wanted to you know I'm 31 I wanted a fragrance that is both old and new mature and youthful and uh, this has been uh, the fragrance for that and it's a lighter fragrance it's a lighter mature fragrance uh, very masculine very classically masculine um, really great with lavender and a um, bit of patchouli as well uh, this is a great oriental masculine classic fragrance that smells like something straight out of the 1980s but updated for today's market um, I've talked about this many many a time and uh, I love it it's fantastic so this is my scent of the day this is the fragrance that whenever I spray it now well it remind me a lot of different things but in the short term it'll remind me of climbing Ben Lomond so let's keep going I hope that this has been a relaxing watch for you. Right there is the summit or the, the top of Ben Lomond. Um, so we've still got probably about 40 minutes to go on this trek. Um, I hope that this has been really a relaxing watch and it's been somewhat relaxing, but it's actually also been uh, one of the toughest things I've done all year. Um, I've climbed uh, two really, really high mountains. The uh, first was the uh, first Monroe I ever did, which was Shahalian, and the second was Pennyfan in uh, South Wales, which is the highest uh, mountain in um, the entirety of the United Kingdom. So number six here is Rule of 72 by 2787 uh, Parfums. This was my signature scent in spring. It's an amazing, amazing scent. It's kind of like, think, uh, Amouage uh, interlude, Black Iris, but with a lot more smoke, a lot more going on and this has less soot than Amouage uh, Interlude Man. This is very smoky, it's incredibly green, it really really suits the uh, typography of the mountain range here. A beautiful beautiful fragrance, um, very masculine, quite animalic, um, not for everybody most definitely. Number five is from Claudio Zucca and this is Bois Primitif or Primitif. I got handed this at uh, Essence in Milan this year and you know we saw a lot of different independent uh, fragrance houses in Milan some were fantastic it's also where I uh, discovered uh, Rule of 72 but the most unique fragrance that I smelt and there are hundreds of uh, independent and niche fragrance companies there the most unique was this this smells like a irisy woody mint ice cream mixed with raspberry jam it is very unique, but yet it's still kind of wearable. It's it's not uh, the most wearable fragrance, of course. It smells like raspberry jam and mint and lavender and iris and lots of lots of crazy stuff going on. But it's delicious. You know, when you've been doing this as long as I have and you've smelled so many different fragrances, it's just so great to smell something so different. This guy came up to me. He was very nervous. I hope he doesn't mind me saying that. Quite nervous to talk to me. He was like, oh my God, you're the fragrance apprentice. And I was like, look, it's not that big a deal, for goodness sake. It's fine, I'm okay, you know. Um, you know, but that was really, really lovely and I was very, very flattered by that. But he really wanted me to try this and um, he sprayed it on my arm. He didn't even have a stall, like real sort of underdog, this kid. And uh, But this was the most unique and the most memorable, apart from Rule of 72. But this was even more unique than Rule of 72. Like I said, Rule of 72 is, is a little bit like a moirage interlude, but still very, very good. But this was fantastic. And I'd recommend that anybody who wants something really, really different and really unique this autumn, and people who are into raspberry jam, um, check this out. But of course, we have to go back to this for number four. This is Vulgari's Man in Black. It's just fantastic. It's, you know, I've sp spoken about this for many years. Um, you know, this has been number one, I think, a couple of times on my autumn list. Um, and so, you know, the top three that we've got are absolutely amazing to, to beat this because this is beautiful, high, high quality juice. Uh, spicy, sexy, woodsy, dark, uh, very gentlemanly. 
um, really, really quite a confident scent. And I really enjoy my, I think when I had the black hair, this really, really suited me. This really, really um, sort of projected a, a great personality, I suppose. And, and, and really that vibe that I used to wear and used to have, that really was this era of the Fragrance Apprentice and the, and the era of George. Fantastic fragrance uh, and amazing, I love it. Um, but I, my, my taste has evolved into these next three. goodness this has been a lot I'm now starting to feel oh a little bit past myself really this has been a hard hard walk you know it's been so hot and so sunny but we're nearly nearly there so we're gonna do number three number two and then we're gonna finish at the top at number one so this is number three this is gentlemen uh, I think I don't know what it is uh, parfum elixir elixir parfum there's so many different names uh, these days by uh, Givenchy and it's a really incredible boozy whiskey fragrance now when I get to the top of Monroe's I have sort of a, a little mini tradition which is um, I try and have like a, a little dram of whiskey at the top of every single Monroe that I climb um, I think that with uh, Shehalian I had a I can't remember I think like a Glenfiddich 15 or something um, with this whiskey well I'll tell you when we get to the top but this has got whiskey it's boozy it's vanillic this is one of the best in the game right now taking that uh, Givenchy gentleman DNA to a whole new level this is sexier and more warming and more inviting than Boise this is like a by the fireplace drinking a whiskey in the middle of autumn with candles everywhere uh, and it's nighttime this is a really really atmospheric sexy wonderful fragrance I think it's my favorite by default actually um, but you know I'm a big fan of whiskey everybody knows that I'm a lover of whiskey but this takes the cake and the thing that's amazing about this is from the top all the way to the bottom this is an adventure this is a whiskey flight if you know that terminology it goes from boozy all the way to a different kind of boozy all at the end it's a really really great fragrance and I really really recommend it my number two is this this is Aaron Terran Hughes's tobacco and this is animalic and beastly and strong it's really a winter fragrance but I love it so much that I wanted to put it on my autumn list this is really really strong stuff if you love big beast mode fragrances this is for you this to me is like the culmination of everything that Aaron has been working on this kind of has hints of smolder and onyx if you're familiar with his stuff but if you aren't familiar with Aaron Terrence Hughes's stuff and you just want sort of like a an abridged version of his work then I would really really get this this is a huge achievement by him and I smelt this actually first time I smelt this was when watching um, a curly fragrance video with Chris I'll link the video somewhere and you can literally see my first impression and I was wowed then and I'm wowed now an amazing amazing fragrance <laughs> After six and a half hours, we did it. It was way too windy at the top for me to be able to film, but let me tell you, it was an amazing experience. If you get a chance to climb any of the Monroes in Scotland, any of them, 
their incredible adventures to take on. My number one was of course Tom Ford Noir Extreme Parfum. To me an improvement on the Noir Extreme. It's a beautiful vanilla chocolatey fragrance. In fact, it's as chocolatey to me as this hot chocolate that my girlfriend got me for my birthday that I managed to open at the top of the mountain. I also managed to carry on the tradition of drinking a whiskey at the top of the mountain. And as for those views, well, I'll let them speak for themselves. This is one of my proudest videos to make. I'm really, really glad that I was able to bring all of this to you. I hope that you had an enjoyable time watching it and that I've shown you even more of the beauty of my homeland, Scotland. I hope that you got some inspiration for your awesome fragrances. I'd love to know what awesome fragrances you're rocking right now. And until next time, if you need me, I'll just be on top of a mountain. <laughs>